Welcome to a code report video where we are going to show how Python combined with ChatGPT leads to beautiful Rust code and is the future of programming in my opinion. But first let's solve a simple problem in both BQN and Haskell. The problem is from a recent leak code contest and it asks you given a list of strings which is called words and another string which is called s if we acronymize our list of strings, AKA if we take the first character from each string and form a string out of it, is it equal to our string S? So in these two cases, Alice, Bob, Charlie, when acronymized is ABC, which is equal to S. However, Ann Apple, when acronymized is AA, which is not equal to S. So visually, it looks something like this. You just wanna create an acronym from your list of strings words and then check whether it's equal to S. So let's hop over to BQM pad to solve this in BQM. So here we are with our test cases. And the first thing we want to do is make a call to a function called first. Note that when we just call first, it gets us the first string in our list of strings. So in order to get the first character out of each string, we need to make a call to a modifier called each, and this will get us our acronym. Now all we need to do is check whether our acronym is equal to our second argument, which is the double struct W. To show what this looks like, we basically are just forming a pair here. And we need to replace this with a function which is gonna check for equality, which in this case is match. So you can see a one for our first test case because we wanna return true, and a zero for our second test case because we want to return false. We can very quickly make this point free by deleting our arguments, putting our first each in parentheses and making a call to the D combinator in this case, and we get the exact same thing. Not gonna go through this in detail, but just know you can do this kind of stuff in BQM. Hopping over to our Haskell solution, this is almost identical to our BQN solution. It just uses named functions that we can read instead of Unicode symbols. So map head is the equivalent of uh, first each, where our mapping function is each in BQN, and first is head in Haskell. And this is going to give us our string, and we just check for a quality comparison with S, and we are done. We can also make the Haskell solution point free by doing the following absolutely beautiful don't need to mention your arguments anymore exactly like bqn except here we're using the b combinator because of differences in the language once again not going to explain this maybe i will in a follow-up video now this brings us to our python solution so for python i went ahead and asked ChatGPT, what is the solution to this problem and i described it and gave it the function signature this was the solution it came up with which is correct however it's not great a lot of comments the first thing I noticed though is that it's making two calls to the dot lower function. So I told Chad GPT, you don't need to call dot lower. Actually, I didn't exactly say that. I just said the problem specifies these strings are guaranteed to be lowercase, hoping that that would simplify the problem. However, all that Chad GPT did was get rid of the dot lower function. So if I were gonna clean this up, I'd get rid of the comments because I don't think they're really helpful. And then I'd get rid of range, len, and the index i and make use of destructuring and the zip function. However, the Python experts are thinking in their head, this is totally unnecessary. You can just make a call to the dot join method on strings and basically create the acronym using a generator expression and the join method and then check if it's equal to S. So very similar to our Haskell and BQN solutions, just different syntax. So ChatGPT gets a you know C minus in terms of generating Python code because I think this is the optimal Python code that you're looking for for this kind of thing. However, I then went back to ChatGPT and asked it to convert this code to Rust code. And it did the following. So if you try to use this in the leak code website, it is going to have a different signature. So you have to replace the ampersand str with string, but then this completely works. I prefer it without the local variable acronym, which just requires you to sort of specify that you're collecting a string and then you can just do this in a single line. But I think this is absolutely fantastic. And you might be thinking, this is a simple piece of code. It's not that hard, but it's gonna fall over on more complicated pieces of code. I recently, over the past week, converted a more than 100 lines of Python code program that was making use of JSON modules, CSV modules, a bunch of stuff. And within 30 minutes, I took the converted Rust code and got it working bug-free, or at least bug-for-bug -bug compatible. And I think that this is the future. I think this is probably more possible with Rust than any other language because of the guarantees that the Rust compiler gives you in terms of memory safety and stuff. The corpus of Rust code that exists today has much fewer bugs than other similar languages like C++. And the fact that Rust has cargo and crates 
whereas C++ doesn't have a package manager that is standard and that you know all C++ code is using the same thing out there, I think makes it a lot harder for Python to be generated using an LLM into C++ versus Rust. And odds are when it does generate that code, it's gonna be a lot more buggy versus the Rust code. So my call is that Python plus ChatGPT converted to Rust is the future because I think Rust is a much more difficult language to learn than compared to Python, but if you don't know Rust and you know Python, you can just write your code in Python, then convert it to Rust using a GPT model, and then just sort out the bugs and you're good to go. Let's bring up a small Python script that I've written that I use when publishing my podcasts. So this is a rather trivial script that is 117 lines long. And we're not actually gonna check that the generated Rust code is correct, but if we go over to ChatGPT and we just ask it to do the following, please convert this Python code to Rust. Copy, paste, let's just watch. Let's just watch, folks. Look at that. This is fantastic, folks. The future is here. The future is here. And continue generating. Why don't you stop? Don't stop. And maybe in a follow-up video, I will actually take this code. But my guess is that, similar to my previous attempt at doing this stuff, within 10, 15 minutes, we'd be able to sort out all the bugs and we'd be able to use this. Now, in this case, I don't actually need this in Rust because the Python code is perfectly fine. But for my other project, the Python code was a bit too slow. And within 30 minutes, I had to have a Rust version that was a lot faster. And that's fantastic, folks. And look at this. It's even telling me that I need to uh, add this to the dependency section of my cargo.tumble file. Absolutely fantastic, folks. Get ready for the future. Python plus ChatGPT will give you your memory safe Rust code, which is faster. Fantastic. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. Till next time.